for AMN TV and I'd like to introduce you all to Into the War Pipe, a new periodical feature on AMN as we get a behind the scenes look at what goes on inside the biggest gaming companies. So why not begin with the world's most recognized video game company, Nintendo themselves? Well, I was invited for a special visit to Nintendo of America's Redmond offices right next to the familiar Seattle based locations such as DigiPen and the gigantic Microsoft headquarters campus. So join us as we take an inside look right here on Into the War Pipe. We were joined by NOA PR manager Matt Atwood as he toured us during the dream visit. So entering Nintendo's infamous historical area, you'll easily see the amount of Nintendo memorabilia everywhere. This place is usually reserved for VIPs and family visitors just curious to see what Nintendo was about back in the day and how it has evolved through several gaming consoles. So what you're walking through here are some kiosks of familiar Nintendo history, all dated from November 6th, 1889, the founding day of the company with its Hanafuda cards. You'll see systems from the past, the original Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, the Virtual Boy, the Super Famicom, the Game Boy Printer, the Super Nintendo. There's just so much history in this very room, it makes up for the ultimate Nintendo fanboy's paradise. Along the walls, we see a lot of awards given to Nintendo by various communities and organizations, mostly for charity work, but I'm sure there are some gaming awards in there as well. As we move along the area, we see more retro goodness with the first edition of Mario Brothers. No, this isn't your typical Super Mario Brothers game on the Play Choice 10, although they do have that arcade game here too, but rather the Japanese Mario Brothers game that we see as an extra mini game on the Super Mario Advance titles. There's even a statue of Mario who points to a plethora of Nintendo game libraries. GameCube, N64, Nintendo DS, you name it. It seems as if all of these games here are rentable by Nintendo employees. Talk about selection. That's a lot of games to play around. The area also showcases a fair amount of Nintendo wearables, Pokemon sets, furniture, even Nintendo's fair amount of trophies. Given to the corporate winners of the annual golf, well, real golf, not Mario Golf, and Mario Kart DS tournaments. That's working for Nintendo folks. As we move along the biggest library in games, I'm talking about Game Boy, we see stand-ups of Nintendo products, ad banners, even an F-Zero AX arcade machine tucked away in the corner. With the Wii trailer playing in the background, we see the entrance to Nintendo's Fun and Games employee store with Nintendo gaming discounts out the wazoo. Can anybody say a DS Lite for near a hundred bucks? Even a Nintendo themed Monopoly game seem to receive its fair amount of attention. Games, gears, wearables, even Nintendo themed car air fresheners too. Of course you'll have to have a Nintendo play get you in the exclusive store, but maybe the cards are right there for you guys later in the future. Well, the offices seemed quite friendly, oozing with Nintendo posters and characters all over the place. What we didn't get to see was the quite unknown Mario Cafe, Nintendo's main lunch place for the employees. And no, no, Super Mushroom and Flying Pigs were not harmed in that area. When things died down and the amazement of Nintendo products finished overwhelming us, we decided to formally chat with Matt about life at NOA, including a few things that we just needed to get off our chests regarding Wii, Space World, and Super Mario Galaxy. And just what do those Nintendo employees do during their breaks? Stick around and check our exclusive interview. So there you have it. Goodbye ROB Rob. Goodbye Nintendo Store. Goodbye Nintendo Glass Silhouettes. Goodbye perfectly non-scathed Virtual Boy console. If only we could have stayed longer just maybe, maybe, well I'll leave that for another edition. So that's your first volume of Into the Warpipe. There's more to come, so join us in the near future as AMN peeks through other gaming companies in our quest to bring you, the gamer, a first-hand look at the locales of gaming prominence. As for you Nintendo fanboys, 
there is actually a strong possibility that some announcements regarding the Wii will be made at the Leipzig Game Convention in Germany, which runs from August 24th to the 27th. After talking with PR manager Matt Atwood, there is also a possibility that Nintendo will come up with some sort of Wii news before or during the Tokyo Game Show this September in Japan. So, there's no Space World for Nintendo this year in Japan, but there's rampant rumors that Nintendo might be holding its own show to demonstrate the Wii capabilities slightly before its launch. If any of these are true, if anything's revealed before the Wii actually launches, you will certainly hear about it first right here on AMN. Stay tuned. This has been Ray Almeida for another edition of AMN TV, and we'll see you next time.